After landing on Pluto and taking a look around, the first thing you would notice is the cold. In fact, if you look carefully, you'll notice that all the liquid in your body has frozen completely. There are two reasons that Pluto is so cold. Number one is that it's far from the sun. Crazy stuff. Number two, however, is because Pluto's atmosphere is made of nitrogen, methane, and carbon monoxide. The atmosphere manages to conduct the cold straight to your body. Think about it like this. If you're just standing there in the cold air, it's cold, sure. But you can tolerate it. But take one leap into a freezing cold pool, and all of a sudden, your teeth are chattering, your bones are rattling, and your lips are falling off. That's because water is a much better heat conductor than air is. Now swap out the pool with thousands of tons of nitrogen, methane, and CO2, and you've got a good idea of why taking one step onto Pluto without a superheated spacesuit would not be a bright idea. Next up is Mars. Unlike Pluto, this planet is relatively close to the sun. So at least during the day when the planet reaches temperatures of about 40 degrees Fahrenheit, you wouldn't immediately freeze to death. Unlike during the night, when the planet reaches temperatures of about negative 220 degrees, during which you would absolutely freeze to death. For reference, the average temperature in a four-door French door smart refrigerator with four types of ice, stainless steel, is about 36 degrees Fahrenheit. Just thought you should know that. But wait, what if it turns out that you're a special child and you're completely resistant to extreme temperatures? Wow, it must be very easy to survive on Mars now. Well, a couple issues with that. Number one. Mars does not have a magnetosphere, so the planet is constantly being slammed with a fuck ton of radiation. Every year, Mars is hit with 300 millisieverts of radiation, which is a lot. For reference, that's more radiation than is contained in a single banana. I know, right? And quick fun fact, that much radiation is not actually beneficial to your health. It would kill you almost immediately, and if it didn't, then you would definitely get cancer. Issue number two is that there's no oxygen. Maybe I could have brought this up earlier, but yeah. If the cold and radiation didn't get you, then you would have max 15 seconds to live due to the noticeable lack of anything to breathe. Death this way would be like drowning, but worse. Because it's not just water you're breathing in, it's carbon dioxide. Probably one of the worst ways to go out. Yet, that's not all. The last insanely deadly part of life on Mars is the dust. This planet is covered in giant dust storms whipping dust at you with intent to kill. If you could somehow breathe the air no problem, you wouldn't even want to without some sort of filter because within seconds, your eyes, nose, and mouth would be filled with dust. You'd end up choking on it as your body is ripped to shreds. Mercury time. Oh, also, if you made it to this point in the video, then subscribe. Appreciate it. Okay, this planet is similar to Mars. Actually, never mind. It's pretty much the complete opposite of Mars. First of all, it's the closest planet to the sun, besides the hypothetical planet that is forever locked in rotation completely opposite us behind the sun so that we would never be able to see it, but that's a tale for another day. Due to its proximity to the sun, the heat is completely insane and brutally intense. On the bright side of Mercury, temperatures reach upwards of 800 degrees Fahrenheit, and on the cold side, it reaches negative 290 degrees or colder. So your options are pretty much either to be baked or freeze-dried. I'll take the latter. At 800 degrees Fahrenheit, all the liquid in your body would evaporate, turning you into a sun-dried tomato in a very short amount of time. Also, notice I said cold and hot side, not night and day. That's because Mercury rotates very slowly. One side is almost always in the dark and cold, while the other is insanely hot. This means that, hypothetically, you'd be able to find a spot right in the middle where it's not too hot or too cold. So if you could, what issues would you face at that point? Besides the obvious lack of oxygen, which would essentially lead to the same kind of death as dying in space, there are a couple other issues you may face, namely in the form of giant plasma tornadoes. And uh, I'm not even going to try to explain those, just let your imagination run free. Also, Mercury does actually have a magnetosphere, so thankfully, you'll be protected from radiation. But the magnetosphere is a bit of a joke, since Mercury is so tiny, the protection is really just not great at all so there's a good chance you'll be slightly deformed by the radiation. Earth. This planet is actually covered in a layer of oxygen, and it has protection from radiation. However, it does have a near 100% mortality rate, so I'd stay away if I were you. Uranus. That's right, you're not gonna get a single Uranus joke. We gotta stay serious around here. This planet is an absolute monster. For one, it's the coldest planet in the entire solar system. Somehow colder than Pluto, even though it's closer to the sun. So take all the deaths to freezing we talked about earlier, and triple them. 
Another horrifying thing about Uranus is the fact that it's not even solid like earlier planets in the list. You might start on the outside, swimming on the surface, but you would immediately be sucked into the middle due to the extreme gravitational forces. At that point, you would be crushed to death due to the extreme pressure. If the pressure didn't kill you there, the insane heat would. The center of the planet is 4,000 degrees Kelvin, which is the same temperature as the surface of some stars. Okay, but what if you were somehow suspended above the surface of the planet, so the insane cold and pressure wouldn't immediately bring your life to an end? Well, another fun fact about Uranus, the wind on that planet is 900 kilometers per hour. And for my Americans in the audience, that's approximately 7.5 times faster than a bald eagle can fly. So anyone above the surface would just be chucked around and smashed into whatever debris may be in the area. Sounds fun. Also, the atmosphere is made of hydrogen, helium, and methane. So, surprise surprise, you won't be able to breathe. But honestly, that's the least of your worries, given the absurd amount of other things you'll have on your mind. Like, for example, x-rays. Since Uranus will periodically be blasted by x-rays, for whatever reason. Next up, we got Venus. Okay, the second you teleport to Venus, bam, you're crushed to death. Interesting feature of Venus, even though it's smaller than Earth, standing on the surface of the planet is like being half a mile underwater on Earth. The reason for that is the thick atmosphere. The atmosphere is actually the main reason the planet's so deadly. It creates a whole host of problems for potential visitors, among these being acid rain and the greenhouse effect. Yup, the greenhouse effect. Same as the one on Earth, except for one teeny tiny difference. There is 154 times more carbon in the atmosphere on Venus than there is on Earth. Wait, 154? I meant 154,000. So, despite being the second furthest planet from the Sun, Venus is actually the hottest. Like, by far. Literally, a single second on this planet would result in your body decomposing and your flesh sagging off your bones. Just like your mother. And of course, you can't forget the brutal landscapes covered in volcanoes and lava rivers. Also, I read that the volcanoes somehow cause lightning storms, so... That's a fun little fact, I guess. I'm definitely too scared to research it further. Venus is probably runner-up for planet with most ways to die. Besides our homeland, of course. It's charming like that. Next up, we got the planet famous for things such as being big and kind of brown, I guess. Jupiter. While Jupiter is very, very deadly, it's arguably the least creative of all the ways planets kill you. Since it's so big, the only thing it's really got going for it is pressure. So as soon as you spawn in on the top layer of the planet, you would instantly be crushed with a force a thousand times higher than the force on Earth. But let's say you survived that experience. You got strong bones. One thousand times Earth just isn't quite enough to end you. Well, at that point, you're dragged to the very center of the planet, at a speed of 49 kilometers per second. As you descend, the pressure builds. It would feel like you're being smashed through brick walls over and over and over. Eventually, you reach the center, at which point you will definitely be crushed under the force of 3 million kilograms of pressure. Saturn, the planet famous for being second. Second biggest, second coolest design, etc. This death is pretty much the same as Jupiter, but you do get to see brown, so there's that I guess. And finally, we reach Neptune which I think would lead to the most insane deaths of any other planet in the list. First of all, you can't breathe, so you're already choking to death on the atmosphere. But, okay, you know the drill. If the lack of oxygen didn't kill you, the wind would. The winds on this planet reach 2,000 kilometers per hour. That's double what Uranus had. If you appear for a single second above the surface of the planet, you would immediately be shot around the planet at 2,000 kilometers per hour. An interesting feature of Neptune is that on the planet, it rains diamonds. Which is cool, until you're being chucked around in what is essentially now a giant beautiful blender. If you hung around the surface for a bit, you'd be treated to another pleasant surprise. Scientists think that some of the oceans on Neptune are boiling hot. I'm talking temperatures higher than the boiling point of water, kept in place only due to the extreme pressure. So you'd either choke to death, be ripped apart, or boiled to death. What a beautiful planet. YouTube thinks you'll like this video next, so click it. And if you made it to the end, subscribe.